How you guys doing? Welcome to Cruel City Podcast, and with us today we have none other than me. Who's Neem? Neem is a American artist primarily known for graffiti. He's worked in other mediums as well, but I would say that he is most recognized for graffiti. What have been put you in this situation and this whole graffiti life? Uh, so I got an older brother and he would take me out skateboarding when we were younger and at the skate parks or on the way to the spots he would catch tags him and his friends and it was something that I caught on to like paid attention to like what are they doing I really didn't like understand it because I was so young but yeah that's the, that was the introduction to graffiti for me. How the love for graffiti started? My love for graffiti started with just like I guess wanting to see my work in my neighborhood, I would go like tag dumpsters with shoe polish that I would get or steal from Walgreens or try to make my own ink with Bic ink pens and we would try to make our own concoction of inks. I fell in love with was just tagging, like going around on my way to school or after school, just catching tags in my alleys and shit like that we would take to to and from school have you got into any trouble i had got caught when i was younger like catching a tag on the back of walgreens like i forgot how old i was maybe like 13 or 12 or something the guy grabbed me and like brought me into walgreens waited for the police and all this shit and like brought me to school because i was on my way to school didn't really catch a case because i was so young i think they were just like the free pass you had all their names yeah, I had I had two names that I clearly remember. I used to write Mika, M I K A, and I used to write Amlik, A M L I K. Um, the letters that I used were primarily just for like the flow of a tag. That's kind of how I would always base creating a name. Those were names that I created myself. Nobody ever gave me them. Um, I just saw what my brother and his friends did, so then I was just like creating my own names. Actually, I would copy other people's tags that I would see. That was like the original thing I did. Like, before doing anything on dumpsters, I mimicked other people's tags in notebooks to, um, I don't know. Like, I was just thinking I was cool trying to beat them or something. Then I was like, oh, I'm going to get my own name. I'm going to take myself to the streets. Like, <laughs> you was pretty young. You did any research or do you know any of the rules of like writing <laughs> and shit like that? No, no, not at all. Like, all I knew was like, I liked the feeling I did when I, I got away with it, you know? Like, I didn't realize any rules until I started meeting like people in the community. But in my neighborhood, nobody was like really um, mentoring me or showing me anything, you know? My brother, my brother was always out with his friends, so he didn't really want to hang out with like a 12 year old. Like he's, he's pretty much a lot older than me. So, you know, he's 20 years old. He doesn't want to hang out with a 12 year old, you know, so. <laughs> and you find your way through the graffiti scene by doing, by tagging for Yeah, yeah. So I feel, I feel like a lot of people recognize me for just tags, like, um, before I did any filling, I would do a cloud and then put a tag in the cloud, just like fill in a little bubble that looked like a bogus cloud. It didn't even have to be white. It could have been like a blue cloud with like a pink tag in it. It was like, it was terrible. It was really terrible. But uh, that's when I really started to get like more, more dedicated or more invested into the game, you know? Then I met with other people going to certain locations where other gra graffiti artists like will practice I'll, I'll run into people or the people from my neighborhood that i skated with um those were like some of my friends that 
I started doing graffiti with, you know? A few of them passed away, rest in peace. That was the original ambition to graffiti. It was from my neighborhood, people I grew up with, and then it evolved to meeting other people from other neighborhoods, seeing how different styles are from even from different crews from different areas of the city. I'm pretty sure you're not the first one, but when you start, you want to conquer your block. You want to conquer that little circle you got, you know? And as you grow, you hear all this ticking over the city. How do you feel about that? At first, it, you obviously, like, you don't know any better, but I was literally, like, tagging in my alley two blocks from my crib and coming home, basically, like, leaving the paint trail back to my garbage can, you know? So that's not something I would recommend for anybody, like, trying to start out. Like, it's it's not necessarily cool to, to burn up where you're sleeping, you know? So I started venturing out because my neighbors know me. Like, in my neighborhood, neighborhood they know me so why would they're gonna be like oh it's that dude on the skateboard it's that little kid you know like they don't know my name but like oh it's that little kid i always see skating around they look out their back window their their dumpsters tagged or their business like i go in there and, and eat or i go in there and shop with these people and i'm tagging on their shit like i started to want to venture out and see other sides of the city like as soon as i was able to jump on the l like i was jumping on the l to go downtown and see the rooftops and I'm not one to really necessarily paint rooftops because once I was able to get my license, I got a car, I started driving around, lurking spots that way. So um, a lot of inner city kids come up and they only basically take the L and those kids are crushing rooftops and shit. And like, that's, that just wasn't my, my way of doing it or not. It's not my way of doing it, I would say, you know? How you find your way of doing it? Um, so, the way I the way I like to paint is I like to see my own work just back to when I was a child, you know, like in my alley, I wanted to see my tag on my way to school, you know. Now I got a job. I want to see my tag on my way to work, you know. So it's like that's kind of where I do my graffiti and, and my job. Um, I'm not necessarily going to pinpoint or say anything that I, I do. I don't want to get too personal on this podcast, but. I travel for work. It's not, I don't go to the same job every day. So there's different places that I go. So that's kind of why my work is probably spread out throughout the city is because I'm not going to the same place every day. But if I did have a route to work, that route would probably be crushed. You know what I mean? Like if I had to go to the same warehouse every day, my route to work would be hammered, you know, from if it was three miles away or three blocks away, like, I would crush that route because I want to see my shit every day. Do you see any development in your style? So I think my, my style is getting more clean. Um, I'm getting a little bit more choppy with my letters and, um, that's, that's influenced by somebody that I've, that I've came across and I can consider him a friend now, my friend Sens. I, I watched him paint and I would always paint like really legible, straight, clean letters. Like I feel like it's a Chicago thing. More recently, I would imagine, you know, before it was more like wild style and technical in the past from what I see from archives from people's photos and now it's more about going big and going bold you know so with some steez to it you know not just like simple straight clean letters so the style that I've started to do a little bit more it's a little bit more wicked my friend sends I watched him paint when I was finished because he takes a little bit longer because his style is a little bit more technical and yeah I just watched him paint and I was like oh that looks fun as hell like just the motions and everything he does to make it look that way like, I was like, oh, I want to try that. So a part of my style was influenced or bitten by sins. But other than that, I feel like my stuff is pretty basic. It's I haven't really expanded too much on letter structures or, or trying to go out of my comfort zone. And that's something that I'm aware of. And I, I don't have an excuse for, it. you know, it's just I'm lazy. I don't sit down and put anything on paper ever. The only time I ever practice graffiti is with spray paint on a wall. I never come to a wall with a sketch. 
and that has its ups and downs, you know? A lot of people that come to, to a wall with a sketch, they're very well prepared. Their piece usually comes out really close to what they wanted the sketch to look like, you know? With the exception of the artist being like, oh, I messed up here, I messed up there, but no, it's like what you see on the paper is what you see on the wall, you know? So my style is, is just a freestyle every time. Um, a lot of it is a, a rerun, you know? I do have a lot of stuff that is really similar, and I feel like... For me, I, I went through a stage of where I would take comparisons to other people and be like, damn, I'm not as good as this guy, or damn, like, why why don't I have a, a, a technical style? Why don't I sit down on paper and do it? It's just like, some people are style technicians, some people are bombers. I'm not making an excuse for myself by saying that, but like, I feel like my style has an identity, you know? I don't want to say like I've branded the name, but like my, my main fill, it's patented, I would say, you know what I'm saying? Like, you could just see one letter and know that it's mine, you know what I'm saying? And you follow quote unquote the steps, tagging, filling, etc. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the I started, like I said, I started doing tags and then I eventually started doing this little bubble cloud fill-in Then I met up with some other people. The first people I started really exploring and doing bandos with was 4CMK and Bape CMK. They would put me on and give me little sketches here and there and shit. And then um, ventured off, started meeting other people. I sprayed uh, one time, I was spraying bandos with Uptown and he went to go link with uh, Orphan TDM and we went out and did a spot and like the spot we did was ballsy. So then after that, that kind of sparked my, that sparked my fire, really, that one spot that we did that night, I would say, to be honest with you, like, we did some burners on a place we shouldn't have, you know? Like, it was, it was a good spot. All that kind of inspired me to, to, to have this hunger to, to be doing what I'm doing now, you know? How you feel about buff walls, brown spots? Brown spots, considerably, uh, they're definitely part of, like, the ecosystem with graffiti. Like, they need to be there. Um, in some cities I've been, there's never even been a buff, you know? So, like, some graffiti just lives forever. And then, like, you have to find new space to paint, you know? So it's almost a, you run out of space in other places. Here, they just clean it for you and be like, do it again, you know? It sucks and it's really demotivating if you want to paint nice stuff because you might spend an hour at a spot or 30 minutes, whatever time you considerably can take, and it's cleaned in like a day. So then you come back for a flick and you're like, damn, it's already gone. I just wasted all this time, all this energy. Like, if you bought the spray paint money, like, um, I can, I've spent a lot of money on spray paint in my life, you know? I'm not just a person that only racks it to paint. Like, it's nice when you do come up on some paint that's for the free, you know? Or discounted, whatever. Somebody, somebody could get you a plug on it and it's super low or whatever. What's your favorite surface to paint? I, I don't necessarily have a favorite surface to paint. I feel like there's a lot of... The, the, for me, I like to get all around. Like, it's it's cool to paint something clean that's, like, smooth, it's metal, you know? It's nice to paint that, but then it's, like, really nice to paint, like, a concrete brick wall. See, you paint a concrete brick wall, it's not as good as the buffed wall. That buff wall is, like, prime. Like, you put any paint on that, it's, it's going on there nice, you know? You get a brick wall, then you gotta use a little bit more paint to fill it in, because it's, like... Or you use like a, a, a roller paint to prime your, your fill-in or whatever you're gonna spray, you know? Um, I've done that before instead of it soaking up all your paint, like you'd use a roller and then fill in on top of that roller paint because it's your primer, just like a buff would be. An advice you got for the future generation? It's definitely to listen, you know, listen to what these people are saying that have been in situations similar to you before you. You got two ears and one mouth, so you should always listen twice as much. That's somebody important to me once told me. I thought I would just learn it all myself, you know? I really thought I would do all the steps that I, I saw people do, or I'm gonna tag them, I'm gonna do throwies, and I'm gonna do straights, and I'm gonna do more and more and more and upgrade and evolve, you know? But, you know, at some point somebody checked me and was like, yo, this ain't cool. Like, what you're doing right here, we're gonna bust your head open. Not necessarily in that manner, but it was like, yo, shorty, check yourself. 
you're getting too close to my guy over here. My background will start touching his piece and shit, you know? It's like, I'm sorry, I thought I was part of the group, you know? Like, nah, it ain't like that. So just pay attention, you know, and, and be, be respectful of others. You know, that's what I could say t to the future generation. Graffiti has a lot of own rating rules. Is there any of those rules that you apply to your graph and why? There's the rules, there's unwritten rules that basically I go by and the way I, you know, the way I was raised comes from, you know, treat other people the way you want to be treated. So if I got a good spot and it's been holding up for a couple months and nobody's around me, cool. But then when other people start coming around me and then it gets buffed, you know, it's like, damn, man. Like, I didn't invite you to the party, you know? And I'm not I'm not ever, like, salty about anything like that. It's just like, that's, it's, like you said, it's graffiti, so I can't really control what other people do. But to me, when I see somebody rocking, I'm like, I'm going to let them be. <laughs> they got a good one, you know? Like, let that, that's a good piece right there. That's a good spot. Just let it be. Let them, let them live there. Let them live their life there, you know what I mean? That's like one of them, and then another one, you know, is just like, for me, I don't necessarily like to paint on other people's, like, personal property, you know? Like, I mean, it, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird, uh, I have, like, a weird moral compass with graffiti that most graffiti writers don't really consider. Like, I'm not trying to write on box trucks unless they're owned by, like, U-Haul or Penske or, you know what I'm saying, some corporation, like, fuck them. You know, but like, dude, some dude that owns the box truck, he scoops up pallets every day. He's just making like 200 bones a day using the box truck. Still comes outside of his crib. You got your throwing on this. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to piss that dude off. He's just an average dude like me. Fuck. Like, that's, that's where I'm at with graffiti, you know? That's my rules. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying like live by that shit, but that's what I consider like, who am I offending? Who am I pissing off by doing this? And I know it's graffiti, so it's like, fuck the world, you know? But then a part of me is like, nah, fuck the system, you know? It's like, fuck the people that are fucking holding everybody back. That's the message for me, you know? Like, I'm not trying to paint on anything that's other than, than what's ours, you know? What's graffiti? Graffiti is like a, it's like a vicious cycle. Like you can never get enough of it. I relate a lot of graffiti to skateboarding because it's like people will spend days, sometimes months trying to do one trick on a, on a film, you know, and they fall and fall and fall, like break their ankle. And once that ankle's healed and the cast comes off, the dude's right back at the spot trying to get that trick, you know, and he'll obsess over it. And once he lands the trick, it, he's like on a high, like it's like the best thing ever. You land the trick, you know, patience paid off. Persistence, you know, it paid off. And then, he's gone. What's the next trick? W what am I doing next? That's it. Like, it's, it's for a minute. You're high as fuck for a minute. And that's what graffiti is. So, like, man, it, 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 is, a, it is a thing that... It's, it's, it's like a drug. You just keep chasing it, you know? You just keep chasing the dragon like, damn, I want that feeling. I want that feeling of freedom. You know what I mean? That's really what it is for me. Like, I'm not locked in a cage and then somebody's not telling me what time to eat. Like, I can go out there and put my word up, put my message up, whatever. What's your point of view on writers doing the same style slash character? To me, it, I'd be a hypocrite to be like, stop being a one-trick pony. That's what it's called in the graph game. Mm -hmm. For me, at least that's what I've heard, and I think it's a really clever name. It's a one-trick pony. It's somebody who only does one style. You know what I'm saying? To me, the, it's, it's a whole ecosystem of graphs, so I feel like there needs to be those people. There needs to be the people that only do the one style. You know what I'm saying? And if that's what you, I, I've grown past to be like, 
the comparison to be like, yo, dude, shit sucks, I'm better than him, or damn, I wish I was as good as this guy. If this guy's only got one style, if that dude could really be entertained for his entire life to do one fucking tag, more married to that guy, you know? But to me, uh, I started out doing straight letters when I evolved, when I went from the, from the tag to the little throwy cloud to the throwies to the outlines. I started painting, for real. I did like 500 straight letters, like over and over and over and over and over until I was so ill with the can. My, my, my can control was good. Then I was like, oh, let me start bending the letter. Let me start trying something different, you know? That's kind of where my mind was at because I wanted, like, I was just bored of it, you know what I'm saying? And if, if you can live with the same style over and over and not get bored of it, that's great. You know, some people get really annoyed of the shit and whether that's like something you enjoy is like pissing people off because they're like, dude, get a new fucking throwy. You know what I'm saying? Or it's all for your own per that's what it's that's what I'm saying. For graffiti, it's your own personal stroke. So if 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 to you you're entertained and you feel fulfilled by just doing the same thing over and over, a tag, a throwy, a straight letter, whatever, do it, you know? I'm not I'm not gonna knock you for it, you know? So that's how I feel about people with their styles and not evolving and because uh, I've seen people evolve with like just doing one style and like all of a sudden they're doing it like really big on places like. There is people that don't necessarily do graffiti, but have races instead. Do you consider them part of the graffiti scene? But that guy, you know, like all he did was like that one little stamp, that one little fucking sticker thing. And he started with like stickers and like that dude is balling now. To me, I don't necessarily want to call it graffiti, but there's a message behind it. It like gives inspiration to people. Maybe somebody's feeling fat or ugly and they're like, they see that sticker. It gives them a little, I don't know if it's a sympathy thing or what it might be. You know what I'm saying? But who's to say that guy's not graffiti? You know what I'm saying? A lot of hip hop motherfuckers be like, that dude's whack, he ain't fucking graffiti, that dude's fucking cornball ass fucking hipster, you know what I'm saying? If it is a dude, if it is a girl, I don't even know who it is, I respect them. They have a message, they put it out there, they invested time into it, people, people connected with it. So now that dude has, like, a gallery and a studio, and anytime he wants to drop anything, he has the funding to spread that message, that positive message, you know? So, hey whatever message they want to promote or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I have a message that I would say. Sometimes I have a little clip on the side that I, I write. I have a thought that I might want to tack on there. You know, lately it's been a lot about time, so I don't know where necessarily everybody's mind is at with it, but a lot of time I'm thinking about it. And now, the favorite part of our podcast. My favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why is he such a toy? I'm such a toy because nobody's ever, you know, smacked me up to tell me to stop doing this. Once that happens, I mean, then, then this toy will leave the graffiti alone. Was there any graffiti where you grew up at? And I would see graffiti up in my neighborhood. Like, there's a couple spots that were hit or maybe were getting done up. And I was like, that's not, like, why... Why is there graffiti on a school bus? Like, why is there painting on a school bus? And it was a rain down school bus. And I passed that a few times and realized, like, that's graffiti. Like, damn, that's cool. Like, not necessarily did I think that when I was at that age, but probably subconsciously I was drawn to it because every time we would pass it, I would be like, like a dog out of a window staring at it, you know? What's your favorite style of choice? My favorite style of choice? Um, I would say it's just clean and legible. I think it takes a lot to paint really clean and have clean lines. What's your favorite color? I don't necessarily know if it's my favorite color, but I use a lot to be blue. Um, blue and green. I do like those colors a lot. Um, you can make a lot happen with them. Where are you getting in from? The name was given to me by my mom when I was younger. Um, I, it wasn't for graffiti. Like She just called me it as a nickname, um, and it stuck with me. So, if you ever hear a woman yelling mean in, like, Target, it's my mom calling me. 
Have you ever been arrested for doing a spot or catching a tag in general? If so, what's the story behind it? Yeah, I've been caught a few times um, doing tags. Specifically, I've been caught a few times doing tags. Uh, one time I jumped out of my car and I was doing a tag on a wall and my car was still running. I was alone. I did a tag on a wall, cop turned the corner. When he turned the corner, I started running, took off through the neighborhood and I was hiding for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. I figured my car was probably getting stolen because the keys weren't in and it was running. And uh, I came out, crept out, felt, oh damn, no, the cops aren't around anymore, you know? They put two and two together that this car was running. I had just left, ru like running away from it with the tag on the wall. And when I got in the car, the cops surrounded it, fucking, you know, guns drawn, get the fuck on the ground, that whole deal. Put the keys, fucking take the keys out, throw them on the street, all that bullshit. Like, six squad cars surrounded me, quickly. Does your family support your art? So my family supports my art when it is like in a, uh, a legal manner. Um, like some of my family likes the graffiti side of it. Um, but that's like more like my younger cousins and stuff that know. I don't necessarily go promoting it and telling it all my family because, um, it's just not their business. And I don't want to inspire like little kids to do this. Well, I kind of do, but I don't want my little cousins to go out getting top doing, you know, catching tags, getting cases. I'm not trying to have my little cousins go through all that. Uh, yeah, my family does support art in a sense. Yes. What's something that bothers you about the graffiti community? There's a lot of gatekeeping in the graffiti community that people aren't willing to give you the information or the access to like be able to even have a conversation with them or be in the same room as them or on the same wall as them. There's definitely more pros and cons to the graffiti community. It's a very inviting community once you start linking up with people that you know, you vibe with, you know, I've, I've gained from graffiti, I've gained friendships and from um, different continents. I've met people from um, different countries and they're like, I would consider somewhat of a friend at this point. You know, we've been in uh, life or death situations together. So um, there's, I, I try not to pay attention to the negative side of graffiti because, you know, you'll just, you just, always be viewing it negatively what's your preparation so the, for different things i prepare differently um a lot of times i do have paint kits set aside to where it's a scheme like a whole fill-in with background and all that like i have bags set aside with i'm ready to go when somebody calls me i could just grab a bag and just walk out of the house i don't have to organize anything um sometimes i put all the caps on the cans so that way I'm not fidgeting with it at the spot. Um, that's a very, that's a very good habit to get into. Um, and when you, you know, when it sucks when you have to put new caps on and it costs money or whatever, but time is money and it's better to be faster at the spot and get out of there like two minutes earlier than potentially the two minutes getting you arrested. What's time? What is time? Time to me is the most valuable thing that we have on this earth. Anything else I can lose and gain back except for my life. Um, but yeah, time is the most valuable thing on the planet. Would you be here without the off-white and loop help? With or without the Virgil thing, I'd still be spraying. With or without the loop sponsorship, I'd still be spraying. You know, with or without my left arm, I'd still be spraying. Like, I'm fucking in it for life, you know? Proud it's a chief spot. There's a few that I have in mind that, like, when I started to get into graffiti, like, it's like a list of spots that I wanted to do. Um, there's one um, off 9094 in the, in the Taylor Street exit, or Roosevelt exit. Uh, there's, like, a, a little ledge on the UPS. Um, I always wanted to do that. And I finally got the chance to do it and did it. Didn't really last so long, but I got a flick of it, so a flick will last forever in, in the memory. How does it feel to be an elite writer, especially with no crew representation? <laughs> um, thanks, thanks to whoever thinks I'm an elite writer. Uh, I, I don't necessarily want to compare to anything like that. It feels good to be recognized as one or somebody that's like, uh, I don't know, however they want to explain that, but... 
I don't have a crew. I don't necessarily rely on anybody to do this. It, it feels good to know that, like, I rely on myself for this, for my own motivation, for when times get really down and I'm, like, uh, unmotivated to go out and paint. Like, it, it's only up to me to really push myself, and I feel like I, I'm pretty good at self-motivating. I have seen some freights of yours. How do you feel about the freight scene? And I don't want to get too much into it. Any last words? Like, something that I would considerably say is like, don't waste your time. It's like the only thing that we have that's limited here. Like anything else, we could get back money, if, you know, if you're down on your luck with anything like, or, or your health too. I mean, that's, that's really your most important thing, but that equivalently leads to time, you know? So just take care of yourself and, you know, respect time because you don't have a lot of it. I don't want to be corny or something, but it, it saved my life, you know? Like, it gives me a purpose, it gives me something to do.